everybody. I want you to quickly uh, tune in and I want you to call everybody you know because we have some professionals tonight who are going to be talking to me, answering all the questions that I have and questions that some of you have asked about uh, the COVID-19 vaccine vaccination process. So I want you to quickly hit that share button, call everybody you know and tell them the pastor is on with three of his favorites, members of Cedar Street, professionals who are gonna be helping us tonight um, as we move uh, forward, giving God praise. If you're watching tonight, it's because you are alive and we celebrate your life tonight. Uh, so quickly, share this. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook Live, on the bottom of your screen, you should see a share button or a watch party. We want to get as many people on tonight. I want you to share this with all 200,000 of your friends so they can all join in and share with us tonight. I am so honored tonight to have <clears throat> some, some of my friends and, and members of Cedar Street uh, with us tonight. We have uh, Cheryl Hamlin, who was Deaconess Cheryl Hamlin, who is an LPN, who is the ministry leader of our health ministry. Uh, we have Dr. Cleo Booker, who is a psychologist, uh, a licensed psychologist uh, with us tonight. Uh, and we have Dr. Marcus Smith, who is a medical doctor with us tonight. So listen, I, we got we got professionals tonight. They, they These people are no rookies. Um, it's so cool to have uh, a favorite nurse you can call when you need some advice. It's so good to know that when you're having a bad day, a bad night, uh, you can call your deaconess who's a psychologist and give you some advice and a bonus to have a friend who's a doctor, y'all. That's just so good. You can call him and say, hey, what do I do? Um, and I try not to abuse uh, any of these professionals, but they have been there when I've needed them. I want to ask you all, first of all, especially you, uh, Dr. Marcus, uh, who is a dear friend, little brother, and uh, deaconess Booker, Dr. Booker, who is another dear sister and friend. I want to know, how did you all feel? When I called you last year in April and told you that I had tested positive uh, to COVID-19. Now, Marcus, when, when the doctor called me, I was walking. And I promise you, once I hung up from the doctor, from the, from the nurse who called me, you were the first person I called. Before I walked into my house, I called you. How did you feel when I called you and I told you I had COVID-19? Uh, <laughs> I think I was shocked <laughs> by even the because. That was early on when, you know, we didn't know a whole lot about it. I and mean, we still don't know a lot about it. But, you know, back then we didn't know anything, how it affects you, you know. So it was kind of shocked, probably nervous at the same time. Just it was so you didn't early. sound nervous on the phone. You didn't sound nervous at all. <laughs> I don't want to portray that to you. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, I just, I just didn't expect it, I would say. That was the big yeah. thing because – I think like a few days before you were talking about working out together. Like, you got it. You remember that? I mean, <laughs> and you were like, no, I don't know about that right now. <laughs> wow. Right. That was a sigh. Uh, but I also remember you calling or sending me a text every day. How you doing? How you feeling? Yeah. How you feeling? So I'll never forget that. So thank you for being there. I also remember when you, it was maybe a, it was a week after I was in quarantine, you were like, well, you okay now. The worst is over. And, and <laughs> right. those to hear those words from a doctor, well, like just refreshing words to hear. So, right. so thank you. Now, now, Cleo, yeah. Dr. Booker, <laughs> you know, I was, I, I did not really have a lot of symptoms at that point, symptoms yeah. at all. I had a cough. I was in the guest room, but you remember I was struggling in that guest room. Remember when I called you and I said, listen, I'm having problems breathing. I feel like yeah. I'm choking. I can't breathe at night. And I remember <laughs> you saying, well, pastor, is this only happening at nighttime? Yeah. <laughs> You're like if, if it's only happening at nighttime, it's probably just your anxiety. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I remember you calling me and I remember I was outside with my kids actually jumping rope. <laughs> um, and, and when I sat down on the steps to talk to you, I was like, oh, here wow. we go. Like, this is real. Because I this think you real. were one of my first like people to like, let me know, hey, I tested, you know, positive. Wow. And I had just saw you a couple of days ago. No, you got it. <laughs> just three days prior, we were in this office yes. having our first round table. So I got to be honest, I was so nervous. 
And and I was like, God, please don't let this, because it was Reverend CC, it was you and me. Yes. And I was like, God, please. I, 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 that would have been worse for me to know that I had caused harm or danger to you and your family. Right. You know, so, right. Um, wow. But I, I want to say thank you uh, to, to both of you. Uh, now, I, some people say, you know, Pastor Chandler is very transparent, up, up front. Uh, I want them to know that I can't keep a secret. And that was not something I, I only <laughs> shared with very few people. Uh, uh, Deacon is Hamlin. I don't think you knew about that. Uh, but uh, I, I only shared it with, with a group, a small group of people because it was a confidential matter. And I didn't want to raise concern. You know, at that time, we had a lot of people, a lot going on. And to have the pastor of Cedar Tree testing positive would have been a, a nightmare uh, and a great story for the free press. So um, thank you for holding that information and confidence. Now, I had I tested positive on April 1st. I'm going to ask Dr. Marcus first, um, you know, am I still good? I mean, I mean, how long are these antibodies supposed to work? You know, if somebody says seven months, eight months, if that's the case, I have expired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the big thing we don't really know right now, so they're still studying it. They say it's a reinfection within 90 days after you had it is rare. So usually, you know, like now even when we talk about the vaccine, they say you can consider waiting that 90 days after, but then after that, we just don't know long term. So that's something they're still studying and looking at right now. So they say 90 days for if you had it. And then for the, the vaccine, we don't even know yet how long that will last. If we'll need it every year, like the flu, or if it gives you lifetime immunity, like some other vaccines, like measles or those things. So not really sure right now. So one of the things at I, the I, ninth I, day mark, I would say. So I, I have expired. I have expired. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah you have. <laughs> and, and, and I have been tested five times, five times. And, and thank God since then, uh, all the tests have been negative and I've tested because I just wanted to make sure. Um, and I, right. I, I tested maybe because I was traveling and, or, you know, there was exposure or something about, I wanted to make sure um, that, that I was okay. Um, now let's talk about this vaccine. Let's talk about this vaccine. Um, there's a lot of conversation about this. Um, some people are, uh, are afraid. Some people are, saying, I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then there are others who are uh, calling the church and waiting in line on a waiting list uh, to get this. Um, have, have, have any of you gotten the vaccination? I, I have. I've got both doses. I think I got the, uh, about two weeks ago. I've got my second dose. So. Wow. Anyone else? Oh, Cheryl no. Hamlin, you're on the fence. No, thank you. You don't I'm want it. The, I'm on the you, fence. You're on the fence. So you're thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Dr. Booker? I'm currently not considered essential. Um, even though I do health care, most of my sessions right now are virtual. So I know that there's a shortage on vaccines. And so I'll just kind of wait it out and make sure that those individuals that uh, have more face-to-face -face contact uh, are able to get it. Well, I got my first shot last uh, two weeks ago, uh, and it was the Moderna shot. Marcus, which one did you get? I got the Pfizer. You got the Pfizer. Tell me the difference. Yeah. What's the difference between the two? It's not a lot of difference. They both kind of use this, this new uh, mRNA type of vaccine, uh, but they're both pretty similar. The, the storage of one is different. The Moderna's every well, one shot, the first shot, and then the second one 28 days later, while Pfizer's 21 days. But, Otherwise, that's pretty similar. The Pfizer was approved for 16 and up, um, but otherwise, than that, there's not a big difference between the two. Okay. Um, now, there are some people who have side effects. What are some of the side effects of, of, of the vaccine, of the first shot? Uh, now, yeah, I've gotten the first shot, and I, I did pretty well. I mean, other than my, my arm feeling sore, and it just felt like I had worked out, honestly. Yeah. Worked out for a long time, <laughs> but I had no other side effects. Yeah. But and they tell me the that the common. second one is harder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably the, the arm being sore, some pain, redness, tenderness. Some people get that even with the flu shot. I know I do too. So that's kind of probably one of the more common ones. And like you said, usually that second shot is where people see more of those other side effects that people are worried about, like the, the fatigue and the body aches, the chills, the fever. Um, and they're usually like a day or so after the shot. And they can last a few days. Most people I've heard just like a day or so but it can last a few days after that so wow. um 
but you don't actually get so some people I know it's some misinformation. Some people think you actually get COVID, but you don't. There's no, you're not getting the, the virus, so you're not getting that. You just get these. Basically, your immune system's working. You know, responding to the the vaccine. Got you. Let me ask Dr. Book in this because there are so many people who are saying, uh, "I don't want to get this because just as Dr. Smith said, they are injecting me with COVID-19." What What are the psychological? What What is the psychological impact of of this whole vaccination process? What is yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you can look at it from various different ways. Uh, what I like to look at it from is it's a, we're in the recovery phase right now of a traumatic experience that we all had last year. And the vaccine can serve as a beacon of hope. And that's the first step towards recovery. So instead of kind of looking at it as they're trying to harm us, because historically we haven't been able to trust medicine, I encourage people to look at it as this is the first step towards recovering um, and hope. And yeah, we may learn some things because this is new, like it, it's, it, it is new. So some sort of skepticism is, it is okay to be a little skeptic. Uh, I'm not gonna say that everybody should automatically trust it. So I think that even people that have received it, there's some sort of skepticism. You're watching your symptoms closely. I bet like both of y'all are kind of, you know, paying attention to every little thing that's going on in your body since you had the vaccine. Um, but try to stay focused on uh, us as a society are coming together. We've created this vaccine in a short amount of time and that should be at least a little, a little light shown at the end of the tunnel. It should be like a, a signal of hope. We're in the recovery phase. Now, now Cheryl, you are... Uh, uh, a nurse, and you are on the fence. You work with pop, you work with sick people. This is your your profession, um, and you are on the fence about getting this vaccination. Why the vaccine? I'm on the fence because of my health issues. Okay. I'm asthmatic. I've talked to my pulmonologist. I'm an asthmatic. I got a lot of allergies, so the medication that's in the vaccine i have to be concerned about as far as how it'll affect my body so that's the only reason why i want the normalcy back i want to be positive i want to you know work towards the recovery phase so it's not that i don't want it i just want to make sure that it's going to be good for my body and yeah, that's wow. what i have to worry about so I, I guess this question is to dr smith so some people should not get the vaccine yeah, I mean, th right. So people, of course, A, if you have an allergy to anything that's actually in, a, in the, the ingredients of the vaccine, of course, you shouldn't get it. Um, people who are prone to have other allergies and those things, you know, you have to kind of, like she, um, like Ms. Hamlin said, talking to their to their doctor about the risk of possibly having, you know, an allergic reaction. So those are the people that really shouldn't get it. Um, of course, ch children haven't been approved for it yet. Uh, Pregnancy and nursing, they're, they're still the the Department of Health and CDC that says there's no reason not to give it to them, but they're not really sure if it's safe or not for those people. Um, and there's some underlying uh, conditions that just kind of we don't know it much about. They were included in the trial, like people with autoimmune disorders or immunocompromised people, but they don't really know how it specifically affects those people yet. Um, but like I said, the big thing, allergies, you don't want to get it if you're allergic to it. Or even if you had an allergic reaction to the first one, even if it was mild, you don't want to get the second one after that. Wow. I think, I think one thing what uh, Deacon and Cheryl indicated, I think is key, is that she talked to her physician. Mm -hmm. A lot of what people are doing is sort of thinking about it over and over and over again. And they're not at peace with their decisions because they haven't taken that additional step to talk to an expert or their physician. Um, and so... It, you know, you can see Deacon and Cheryl is at peace with her decision that she's made. And it's partially because she's had that expert advice and she she reached out to her physician. So that's that's a, a very important point right there. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that because, you know, the social media, there's so much out there that people just go off something they read there. But I think like talking to your actually doctor about your specific condition or your situation, I think is the best thing. The hesitancy amongst African Americans and minority groups is so real. How can we, what should we say? What, how should we convince them, educate them, or 
tell them not to take it. I mean, what should we do? How can how can I, as a pastor, uh, share this information to my congregation? What do I need all to do? All the reassurance, um, because of the past and historically stuff that has happened in the past in the medical field, you know, it, they have to be reassured that seeing other African Americans, seeing Latinos, and you know different minorities actually taking the test, having the test, having the vaccination and actually being okay from it. They need to see more of that to be reassured that, hey, I'm not going back to Tuskegee way. I'm not going back to some of the other tests from the past that they really are trying to help me to come to some type of normalcy, to come back to some type of healing. They have to be reassured. You know, people are, are not assured of that this is going to work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think also respecting where people are is important. I keep talking about recovery right now. We're in a recovery phase. <laughs> and part of that is respecting people where they are. So like I said, there is skepticism that should be allowed. And all we can do is support people in the process and in the phase that they're in share our experiences like we're doing right now. I think this is an awesome opportunity, making sure they have access to correct information and access to the vaccine when they are ready. But I don't think that we should be pushing them to do one thing or another. People have to be, like I said, at peace with their decisions. They have to feel respected and supported through this process. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, Dr. Smith, you work primarily with a, a, a male geriatric community for the most part. Uh it's a blend, but I mean, a lot of my patients are older. Um, so, how, so how, what's, what has been what 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 has been their response? Uh, so I work at the, the veterans. You know, they're kind of they're, they all want it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them say they got injections when they were active duty. They didn't know what they're getting. They're like, I'm fine. Just give me whatever. <laughs> so it's a little different population, but uh, but a lot of, like. Everybody's been saying if people want to get back to normal, um, you know, we, we tried the social distancing, the mask kind of, and people doing it, some people not, not really worried. This is kind of the one thing we have that hopefully can kind of get things somewhat normal, you know, by the, later on this year. So. Wow. Now, now you both have small children. You have a grandchild, grandchildren. Is this vaccination good for children? Will it be administered to children? Should it yeah, be administered correct. to children? Like I said, right now, the, the Pfizer is, is 16 and up, and Moderna is 18, so not approved for children yet or allowed to, the emergency use authorization, authorization for children yet. Um, they are looking at it. I would probably be, I would probably more willing to, for me to do it than my, my younger children yet. And then there's always, you know, risk versus benefit because younger children aren't typically affected as, as much by COVID. So, I would have to have a lot more evidence before I would say for my children to go that route. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. And and as I'm about to say this, I feel like breaking out into a, a shout. But uh, <laughs> my children have been really healthy. Like 2020, we probably had to go to the doctor one time. I mean, we ain't wow. had no fevers, no cough, runny noses. So that's another reason why I don't feel pressured right now mm -hmm. to really get the vaccine because I, I mean my family really has been covered I'm just I'm thankful I know a lot of families haven't been in the same situation but uh I don't know for some reason I don't know if it's a ha increased hand washing hand sanitizing clothes sanitizing I don't know what it mm -hmm. is but uh they've been they've been pretty healthy lately wow and listen we call <laughs> in my house uh we call Marcus Dr. Fauci we call him Dr. Fauci <laughs> because of all the rules and regulations that he has for his family I know at one point you would strip at the door before you walked into the house and change your clothes. Are, are you still doing that, Dr. Fauci? <laughs> uh, yeah, after work, yeah. It, clothes go in the garage, still in the bag. I shower before I touch anybody. That's <laughs> only after work, though. You know, not just a normal day. <laughs> wow. Cheryl, how, what about you? I'm here. I won't wow. let them hear me. Wow. <laughs> I think, I think you all live in a bubble. I think your house, you can't let anybody go. Is the vaccine going to solve this problem? I think people think the vaccine, the vaccine is going to remove COVID. 
Is COVID going to be here forever? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully not. Uh, I don't know if we could honestly say. Uh, I mean, the vaccine is a part, a tool to help, you know, still, um, like I think we were talking earlier about, you know, still got to do the social distancing, the mask, because we still don't know if the vaccine will prevent you from being a carrier and then you can still give it to somebody else. So we still have to do those, those things until it's totally gone. So I think the vaccine is a tool that we can use, but we still have to do these other things to actually totally get rid of it. So, I mean, I hope, you know, by this summer, late, you know, this fall, that somewhat normal. Mm -hmm. But there wow. is another strand out too. Yeah, so what about these, all this, something in Africa now, something in yeah. London now? <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it's, and that's the thing that they don't know, like, hopefully the vaccines still work against it. I think they still think they will, just maybe not as effective, but the sooner you get people vaccinated, the less it can spread, hopefully from person to person to, to stop the, you know, from mutating. So, and, and like I said, just the whole, the, everything, the mask, the social distance, the more we can do, the hopefully we can stop from one person, going from one person to the next to just slow it down and hopefully get rid of it. You said something to me when I tested positive. You said, I think after I gotten over, got through, you said that I had a a, a, a lighter strain of of it. And it's amazing how some people could get COVID and recover, and others it just yeah, it, it kills that's, them. That's the that's the crazy thing about it. Uh, I have two friends recently that had one's diabetic, overweight, in his forties, and had just a sore throat, and then one mid to late 30s and he was hospitalized went home on oxygen it's just you know just the, the how it affects everybody's different i think that's uh, as fed into the skepticism too because you'll know so ah, it doesn't do anything and then you see like i said somebody else passes away from it so uh, it, it's just just the odd you know virus wow and dr booker will we will we ever get over this paranoia this fear of will i get it again you know a cough and and you think I have it, <laughs> you know? I mean, I was in a meeting uh, the other day and I, this guy coughed twice and I was like, you know what, I'm leaving. I'm going to the other room. So, I mean, how long would it take us to get beyond or past this paranoia? It's it's gonna take some time. Um, and I would say it may even take over a decade for our mental state to actually get back to feeling safe again. If you think about, you know, HIV, uh, when that first, kind of was, was talked about and everybody became aware of it. There was a, a paranoia there that probably needed to exist, right? Um, but it, it lasted for a long time where people, every time they had the flu, because the first sign of HIV was flu-like symptoms, they thought that they had HIV. So just, you know, it, it's, it's with any new virus or any new um, strand of something that comes out it sort of stays on your mind for a while. And this, like I said, it was a traumatic experience for a lot of us. I know that uh, people don't like to admit that they have been influenced mentally by what happened last year, but every single one of us were impacted mentally by what happened in, in 2020. Um, and so it's gonna take us some time to heal from that. It's, mm -hmm. And it's not gonna be overnight. It's wow. not gonna be two, in a year. <laughs> two final questions, I'm gonna let you go. I know you're busy. Can, Dr. Marcus, can we take off our mask now? Since if we, if once I get my second vaccination, can, I can take my mask off. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Like I said, they're still looking at it to see if you can be a carrier and, and transmit it still. But right now, I'm still keep it on social distance, all that still. Wow. Now I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going all the way past it now. Are y'all ready to come back to church yet? So let me tell you, Pastor, I will, I would love to, but I feel like I'm a risk to others because my kids go to school, they go to daycare and they still do like martial arts. And so they're exposed to a lot of people. And even though they've been healthy, we've been healthy. I don't know if we're ever at any point a carrier. So I'm hesitant to put myself around other people because I care so much about them. Like it's, it's really something that plays on my psychological state because I want to come to church. I want to be around people, but I'm like, at any point, could I be risking other people because of, you know, how we are living? So it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult decision to make. <laughs> Even with all the safeguards we have in place and all the rules and the temperature check and the hand sanitizer and the spacing and the social distance, is there still some hesitancy? 
It is. It's some hesitancy. I mean, we're almost we're almost there. And I'm the psychologist, right? <laughs> I mean, we're almost there, but it's a part of like, I don't want to be responsible for potentially, you know, passing on unintentional. The kids are just so, they're like germ, like, you know, they carry so many germs and you don't even know what they're carrying on them. Um, so I, I, my husband and I, we actually talked about taking turns. So James and I, we talked about should he go one Sunday and I stay home with the kids and then I go and then he stays home with the kids. So we're being pulled to come back. It's just mm. getting over that psychological fear that mm. we're not going to infect somebody. <laughs> Deacon Cheryl, I'm going to ask you last because you've been in worship, but Marcus, you said something early on last year. I'll never forget it. And I didn't realize how spiritual you were, but you were like, hey, you know, we got a virus, but people still need a word. You got to You got to still <laughs> preach, Pastor. You know, so. Why am I here by myself then? <laughs> Why are people yeah, I, coming? Yeah, I think for me, I think I'm moving closer to it. I think for our parents, like my mom and dad are here almost every day with the kids, uh, my mother-in-law. So I just feel once they get vaccinated, then I feel a little more comfortable. You know, once I feel like they're protected, if we did bring something home, then, then they're okay. You know, so I think once they get that, then I can feel, because they're, part of my bubble so once they're all protected then i feel a little more comfortable doing gotcha. that so, gotcha yeah. now cheryl hamley you are uh deacon of cheryl you are the leader of our health ministry you have helped me and helped us to make sure that we uh, have we follow all cdc uh requirements how safe is coming back to cedar street i've been there oh <clears throat> I'm okay. I mean, I got faith in God, so I'm okay. As um, long as I use all of my protection, staying six feet apart, using the sanitizer, using the mask, I'm okay. As long as I know also that the church is doing their disinfecting periodically as well. Um, mm -hmm. I feel safe. I don't, I mean, I go to work every day. I got to go to work tonight. So <laughs> I mean, I'm around it all the mm -hmm. time. So I'm okay. I'm I'm good. I need that word, and you been bringing it like bringing it. So, <laughs> so that I've been bringing it to that invisible church every Sunday. <laughs> I'm there with you every Sunday. All yeah, we're well, watching. Ten o'clock. Watch all that. That invisible <laughs> church. church at nine thirty with Minister Harvey. That's been great too. Wow. Being Zoom. All that. <laughs> Well, that's good to hear. Listen, I know you are a busy, you're professional, so I do not want to uh, uh, take up your entire evening, but I want to say thank you. Any final thoughts, anything I missed that you think we need to share? Any questions? Um, any comments? Any help? Any, any, any helpful nuggets that you could share? I, I just want everybody to support each other during this time. People are going to be in different phases and make different decisions for different reasons. As long as you make the decision that's good for you, you're at peace with your decisions and, you know, go have it. Like, don't, don't compare yourself to anybody else right now. And definitely don't judge anybody for the decisions that they make. Cause we're all dealing with, you know, these decisions in various different ways. And just please, think, please, even though you, had the vaccine, please don't not put that mask on. Please don't not <laughs> stay six feet apart. Please protect yourself and everybody else because people are not doing it. So we really got to play a part in really telling people, hey, you got to really still wear the mask. You got to stay six feet apart because they're not. They're not. And that's scary. Wow. Yeah, right. and I think mine would be if like, don't use social media and the, the internet to, to guide your decisions. If you have questions, you know, talk to your doctor or healthcare, someone in healthcare to, to help you make that decision. You know, whether you choose to or not, just don't base it off of somebody you don't even know posted on, on, on Instagram or something. I promise you, final question, Marcus. So if somebody wants to get the vaccine, how do they get it? Uh, so the different phase right now is uh, phase 1B, so 65 and older uh, essential workers and uh, uh, 16 and 64 with uh, comorbidities. So you could go on the Virginia Department of Health website um, and they you can sign up there. So I know there is a, it's not as swift as they want right now. So hopefully they work that out, but you can just register on there and put in your information. They contact you after that. Okay, good. Dr. Booker. 
Uh, Nurse Hamlin, Dr. Smith, thank you so much for uh, enlightening us tonight. I know we're better. I'm better. Tonight I learned that my uh, my immunity has expired, so now I gotta keep my mask on. <laughs> hey, I really appreciate, love you all, and thank you. I pray to everybody watching tonight that you were enlightening. You were enlightened. I want you to make sure that you uh, share this uh, with everybody. You know, we had some helpful information from some professionals tonight. Uh, that has helped me. And I know it has helped everybody who's watching. So again, thank you, Dr. Booker, Nurse Hamlet, and Dr. Smith. Thank you for your time. I want you all to have a great evening. Do me a favor. Can you hug uh, your children and your grandkids who I have not seen uh, since last March? Can you do me a favor? Give a big hug for me. Tell them Uncle Pastor loves them. All right? Love you all. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>